us with this one, conjunctions. And conjunctions are very important in grammar because they help us to know how different parts of sentences are linked together in an English. And a conjunction is a word or a pair of word that connects sentences or connects words, phrases, or clauses. So conjunctions is a pair of word. Or a word that connects phrases, words, or clauses. And example, for instance, in a sentence, if I say, she sells and buys used cars. In such a sentence, we have used that sentence to connect words, and the words that we've connected is sells and buys. And the conjunction in that sentence is add. Add is our conjunction, and we have used it to connect sells, the word sells and buys. We can also have another sentence. He speaks French, but he speaks in French, but not in English. In such kind of a sentence, we have connected a phrase. The phrase we have connected is in French, and in English. And the conjunction that you have used to connect is but. But is the conjunction that you've used to connect the phrase in French and the phrase in English. You can also have another sentence. Practice writing or you will never improve. Practice writing or you'll never improve. In this sentence, we've connected a clause, practice writing, and we've connected it with this other one, you will never improve. And we've connected those two clauses using the conjunction or. In English, you have types of conjunctions. Types of conjunctions. You have types of conjunctions. And the first one is coordinating conjunctions, which is covered in form one. Then we have number two, subordinating conjunctions, which is covered in form two. And then we have number three, correlative. Correlative conjunctions which are covered in form three. Today, I want us to focus on coordinating conjunctions. And if time allows, we look at subordinating conjunctions. So when we talk about coordinating conjunctions, these are conjunctions that help us to link clauses. And they also help us to join groups of words that have equal grammatical weights. Coordinating conjunctions. They help to join group of words. They help to join group of words that have 
equal grammatical weight. Group of words that have equal grammatical weight. And these coordinating conjunctions help, uh, we know them by writing a certain mnemonic, which we write in a vertical position. Fanboys, if you want to know the coordinating conjunctions, just write the word fanboys in a vertical position. Fanboys. F stands for for. This one, R stands for and. N stands for nor. B stands for but. O stands for or. Y stands for yet. S stands for so. The seven coordinating conjunctions have different works and uh, helps us to join similar ideas. And we use and to join two similar ideas. For instance, if I say For instance, if I say John and Mary John and Mary are in form 1 John and Mary are in form 1 I've used and to join two similar ideas, which are John is in form one, Mary is also in form one. So instead of having two sentences, John is in form one, Mary is in form one. Mary is in form one. I use and to join these two similar ideas and come up with one sentence. So the sentence is, John and Mary are in form one. And our learners, as we continue with the lesson, we are live on YouTube, KUTV Edimu Rive. You can follow us there. And in case you have a question, you can write it down. Uh, it will be there on the screen and we'll answer your question. Number two, we have for. For is a conjunction that gives reasons. It is used to give reasons. It is used to give reasons. You, have a, you can have a sentence. I was, I was punished for I was late. I was punished for I was late. Maybe this is a student who went to school late and the teacher decided to punish them. So we are giving the reason of why this person was punished. And the reason is because the person was late. So for is used, is a coordinating conjunction that we use to give reason. Then we have nor. Nor joins negative statements or ideas gives negative statements. It joins negative statements. For instance, I can say, he doesn't work, he doesn't work, he doesn't work, nor do I. In such a sentence, the idea that you are trying to bring out is the person does not work. That is a negative statement. And at the same time, I do not work also. So instead of having the two sentences, I do not go to work or I do not work, and the person to say he doesn't work, I join the two using a coordinating conjunction nor to bring out the negative statements and I join them 
and that gives us the sentence, he doesn't work, nor do I. Then we have, then we have, but, but joins contrasting ideas. So unlike and, where we had similar ideas, now we use but to join two contrasting ideas. For instance, I can say he drives, he drives slowly, but sure. Yes, he drives slowly, but sure. So these two ideas are contrasting. Unlike the, the, the ideas that are brought out in this sentence are not same, are not the same. Unlike in our first sentence where we had two same ideas. So in this case, we are talking about a driver who drives slowly, and although this driver drives slowly, he's sure. So you can be assured that such a driver will not cause accidents. Then we have all, all joints alternative ideas alternative ideas all joins alternative ideas so it, it means you have an alternative for instance for instance i can say maybe i'm talking i'm talking to a person maybe it's a friend and i tell my friend we can go to Naivasha, we can go to Naivasha or stay at home and watch a movie. We can stay, we can go to Naivasha or stay at home and watch a movie. This is our coordinating conjunction and it is bringing out alternatives. We have two alternatives in this sentence. The first alternative is we go for a trip in Naivasha or we can stay at home and watch a movie. Those are two alternatives. So in such a case, you can choose. What do you want to do? Do you want to go to Naivasha or do you want to stay at home? Then we have yet. Yet. Conjunction yet is used. It is used to show contrasting ideas. Just like the, the conjunction but. So in, in place of but you can use yet because the two bring out the same idea. You can say I was punished, I was punished, yet I arrived early. So maybe this is a student who is telling us he or she arrived early in school, yes, but was punished. So you can see it's a contrast. You don't expect someone who arrived early in school to be punished. That's why we are saying, yet brings out contrasting ideas. I was punished, yet I arrived early for school. Then our last coordinating conjunction is so. It shows that, shows that the first idea it shows that the idea is as a result is as a result of the first occurrence is as a result of this first occurrence for instance if i say for example I was sick, I was sick, so I went to the hospital. 
I was sick, so I went to the hospital. So going to the hospital, in this case, was caused by you being sick. So that means if you are not sick, you would not have gone to the hospital. And there is a certain point I want you to note that all the coordinating conjunctions, when you join the two sentences, we always separate the first part of the sentence from the second part of the sentence using a comma. And another thing that you are supposed to note is that all coordinating conjunctions, all the, all the seven coordinating conjunctions, the ones we've listed in the vertical position, in a vertical line, the fun boys, all of them except for can join phrases, words, or clauses. But for the conjunction for only joins clauses and nothing else. For only joins clauses and nothing else. And we said for is a conjunction that gives reasons. So that one you're supposed to know. That's a, an NB. All the others can join words, phrases, and clauses, but for does not join words and phrases. It only joins clauses. And the other thing, I want us to have some sentences here. And then we join them using the coordinating conjunctions. And you'll see that when we go to the other types of conjunctions, that the subordinating conjunctions, they behave in a different way compared to the coordinating conjunctions and also compared to the correlatives. All these three conjunctions behave differently. For instance, we can have sentences. For instance, I love to travel. I love to travel. I hate traveling by bus. I love to travel, yes, but I hate traveling by bus. So in such a sentence, if you are brought forward such a sentence in an exam, the first thing you're supposed to ask yourself is, which ideas are these similar ideas? Are they contrasting? Are they negative? Are they giving reasons? Is the first part of a sentence or uh, as a result of the second occurrence? So all those questions are the questions you ask yourself. Once you see that the questions require you to use the coordinating conjunctions to join those sentences. So in our sentence here, or in our two sentences here, we have, I love to travel. I hate traveling by bus. So the two ideas are contrasting. You love to travel, yes. You don't like traveling by bus. So we'll use a conjunction that will help us to bring out the contrasting idea. So the con then I said that but and yet bring out the contrasting idea. So you'll say, I love to travel. You'll join the sentence using the coordinating conjunction but, so you'll say, I love to travel, but I hate traveling by bus. And you'll note something else. Our word here was travel, but now when you've joined the sentence, so that you can bring out, so that your sentence can be grammatical, you will say, I hate traveling. We are adding an ing in the word travel so that the sentence will be grammatical. You cannot say, I love to travel, by but I hate travel by bus. That sentence will be correct. Yes, you've used the conjunction. You've joined the sentence, but grammatically, it will be wrong. So as much as you are joining your sentences, make sure once you join those sentences, they are grammatically correct. Number two, we can have a sentence. You should go to bed. You, you should go to bed. 
you should go to bed now. And the other part, you will be tired tomorrow. You will be tired tomorrow. So ask yourself, what ideas are being brought ab about in this sentence? The two sentences, the two sentences, you should go to bed, you will be tired tomorrow, are bringing an alternative. And we said that the conjunction that we are used to bring, that we are using to bring out an alternative is all. So we should use, join these two sentences to bring out an alternative. And we'll say, you should go to bed now. You should go to bed now. Or you will be tired tomorrow. You should go to bed now or you should be tired tomorrow. You can see the idea of alternative has been brought out very well. You have an alternative. You either go to bed early or now or else tomorrow you will be tired. You can see that idea is being brought out very well. And as I said earlier, in case of any question, you can go, you can write it, and it will be there on the screen. And you can follow us on the YouTube, KUTV Elimu Live. You can even refer your friends as you are at home so that you can also help them so that they can gain something. You can have another sentence. The bus stopped. The bus stopped. Two passengers got out of it. The bus stopped. Two passengers got out of it. So in, in, in that, in those two sentences, we have two similar ideas. And we are saying the bus stopped. Two passengers got out of it. And I said, when you have two similar ideas, the conjunction that you're using is and. So you're supposed to use these two sentences to join, uh, you're supposed to use and to join the two sentences. The bus, so our sentence will be, when you use and, the bus stopped, the bus stopped, and two passengers, the bus stopped, and two passengers got out of it. So there we have our two, we have our two similar ideas, we've joined them. And another thing that I want you to note, under very rare circumstances in grammar, you'll ever find a coordinating conjunction starting a sentence. Coordinating conjunctions do not start sentences under very rare conditions, unless but when you go to the subordinating conjunctions, you'll see that you can start sentences using the subordinating conjunctions. That is a point you're supposed to note. Let's have the last example so that you can go to the subordinating conjunctions. I arrived. I arrived at school late. I arrived at school late. I left home early. This is the second part of the sentence. I arrived at school at I arrived I left home early. So the two sentences you can see there is a contrast in the two sentences. Why? You don't expect someone who left home very early in the morning to arrive at school late. So we'll use either but or we can use yet. As I said, the two are used to bring out contrast. So you can say, I arrived at school late, yet 
Yet I left home early. Yet I left home early. So you can see we have used yet to bring out the idea of contrast. That this person, yes, I left at school very late, but they had left home early. Those are the types of coordinating conjunctions. I've said there are seven. And if you want to make your work easier to note them or to note them, just write the word fanboys in a vertical position and you will find that, the, that your work will become easier. And make sure you note the use of each and every coordinating conjunction and the idea it is bringing out. And by doing so, even your work in an exam will be very easy. Now, I want us to look at the subordinating conjunctions. I want us to look at the second part or the second type of conjunctions, which is subordinating. And I said that coordinating, we cover them in form one, and subordinating conjunctions, we cover them in form two. So subordinating conjunctions are a bit complex. So the first question you should ask ourselves is what are subordinating conjunctions? Subordinating conjunctions. And I said conjunctions are very important because they help us to know how parts of a sentence are linked together. And you can simply say, if you don't want to make your work difficult, that conjunctions are joining words. Simply conjunctions are joining words. Subordinating conjunctions, now this type of conjunctions are a bit complex as, as, as I had said earlier. They are used to join, they are used to join subordinate clauses. They are used to join subordinate clauses to the main clauses. They join subordinate clauses with the main clause. And in so many cases, we call the subordinate clause, we call it a dependent clause. It is also called a dependent clause. And the main clause, we call it independent clause. Independent clause. So these types of conjunctions, and they are quite many, unlike the coordinating conjunctions, these are quite many. And they are used now to join subordinate clauses or what we are calling dependent clauses to the main clause or what you call independent clause. And the first thing you are supposed to note is a dependent clause do not convey a complete thought or an idea. This one does not convey, does not convey complete thought. Does not convey complete thought stroke idea. Whereas the main clause or the independent clause conveys a complete thought or idea. So with the reason why we are joining the two, the reason why you are joining subordinate clause and the main clause is one. So that we can this subordinate clause depends on the main clause to convey its idea. That means if I give you a subordinate clause on its own, you will not know what is the sentence will be hanging. You will be asking yourself, what was this person trying to say? What was the intended uh, information that I was supposed to get? Because now the sentence will be hanging. But if I give you a main clause or the independent clause on its own, you will understand that sentence because I'm saying it conveys a complete thought. And I said also, subordinate conjunctions is always followed by a clause. Subordinate conjunction is always followed by a clause. And I know someone at home is asking, which are these subordinate conjunctions? I said they are quite many. We have after, we have after, we have also, we have as if, 
We have a sunas. We have when. We have though. We also have if, as much as, as much as. We also have because, we also have because, we also have where, we also have where, we have whenever, whenever. Until we have unless there are quite many. We have now that we have now that we have once we have till and the list is quite long. And you can remember in our definition of a conjunction. We had said that a conjunction is a word or a pair of words. We had said a conjunction is a word or a pair of words. And you can see now in this case, for the coordinating conjunctions, it was just one word. The coordinating conjunctions were just one word. But in this case, we have pairs of words or we have more than one. That's why we said in our definition that a conjunction is a word or a pair of words. Now. I want, to, I want to show you how we use these subordinating conjunctions in sentences and how we link these dependent clauses with the independent clauses. For instance, in a sentence, you can have a sentence. You can have a sentence as an example. When the door was knocked, when the door was knocked, when the door was knocked, Joan rose to open it. Joan rose to open it. And you should also note that the word Joan starts with a capital letter because in grammar, in the nouns, it's under proper nouns, and all proper nouns start with a capital letter. So in this case, when is our subordinating conjunction? And you can see that we have two types, or we have two parts in this sentence, which are separated using a comma. When the door was knocked, Joanne rose to open it. So in this case, you're supposed to ask yourself, which is the, the clause that is conveying uh, 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 that is conveying a complete thought and which one is not conveying a complete thought. If I say when the door was knocked and I stop at that, that sentence will be hanging. But if I say Joan rose to open it, maybe we are talking about Joan and now maybe we are talking about something she did, you'll be able to connect the two. So this is our subordinate clause and we said subordinating conjunctions joins a subordinate clause to a main clause. So this is the subordinate clause which is joined to the main clause. So our main clause there is Joan rose to open it. We can also have another example. It is hard to give up drugs. It is hard. It is hard. It is hard to give up drugs. It is hard to give up drugs once you've started. It is hard to give up drugs once you've started taking them. It is hard to give up drugs once you've started taking them. So in this case, you can see, we have two types of sentences or two clauses. The first one is, it is hard to give up drugs. And the second one starts from where we have our subordinating conjunctions once you've started taking them. So the first thing you are supposed to ask yourself is, which is the clause that is conveying a complete thought? And the one that is conveying a complete thought is the independent clause, or what we are calling the main clause. In this case, when I say it is hard to give up drugs, 
I have communicated. Maybe you are talking to students, maybe you are advising students, and when I, you just stand up and tell them it is hard to give up drugs, they know what you are saying. But once I stand up and say, once you've started taking them, now you're even hanging, you're asking yourself, now what are these that you've started taking? So you can see that this is our dependent clause. This clause here depends on this one to convey its meaning. We can also have another example using another subordination conjunctions. Although it was called, although it was called, although it was called, he took off. Although it was called, he took off his coat. Although it was called, he took off his coat. In this case, this is our subordinate clause. This clause here depends on this one to convey its meaning. If I say, although it was called, that sentence does not convey any meaning. It is not communicating at all. But when I say, he took off his, his coat, now that sentence is complete. And another thing I want you to note is, in these sentences, especially when you have a comma, after a comma, the other clause does not start with a capital letter. Instead, it starts with a small letter. Because when we are marking as much as you are correct, and then we find that you've, uh, you've, uh, you have joined the, uh, you've used capital letters where they are not supposed to be, you will not get a correct, or you will not get a tick. So you are, very, you are supposed to be very keen on the, how you are using your words and how you are punctuating your work. Because, and others you find that at, in, a, in some cases, you find a student writing, although it was called, after although he puts a comma, although it was called, he took off his coat. Although it was called, he took off his coat. In such a case, Yes, this sentence is grammatically correct. But when it comes to the punctuation marks, it is wrong. Because after the, after the subordinating conjunction, as much as the subordinating con conjunction is starting the sentence, you're not supposed to put the comma. So as you are punctuating your work, be very careful. We can also have another example. I can't take you out. So as I said earlier, there is a difference between subordinating conjunctions and the coordinating conjunctions. And the first one is that coordinating conjunctions joins words, phrases, and clauses. But for the subordinating conjunctions, it only joins clauses. And the other one that I said is, it is very hard to find a coordinating conjunction starting a sentence. But for the subordinating conjunctions, many are the times when we start sentences using the subordinating conjunctions. For instance, in, the, in our sentence, although it was called, he took off his coat, the word although there is a subordinating conjunction. And you can see that it has started our sentence. We can also have another one that is started a sentence. Because I was sick, because I was sick, because I was sick, I went to see, I went to see the doctor. Because I was sick, I went to see the doctor. And most, in most cases, if you want, because there are times in an exam we can tell you, we give you, we won't tell you to join the sentence, you see it's our coordinating conjunctions. We'll bring these sentences having been joined, and then we'll tell you, identify the dependent clause or identify the main clause in these sentences. So you have a lot of work to ask yourself, but today I want to make your work easier. At all times, from where you have the subordinating conjunction, up to where maybe you have a comma, that is the subordinate clause, or that is the independent clause. And that's how you're supposed to make your work easier. For instance, in this case, because I was sick, because is our subordinating conjunction. So from here, up to where the comma is, this is the dependent clause. 
This is the dependent clause, or what we are calling the subordinate uh, or the subordinate clause. And the other one, I went to see the doctor. That is the independent clause. That is the independent clause. So you can see, I went to see the doctor. That sentence is communicating. That sentence is conveying a complete thought. And like the first one, because I went to see, uh, because I was sick. The first one is not communicating at all. And then now we can also have, uh, at times, since the subordinating conjunctions are quite many, we limit you. If you bring, if you are supposed to, uh, or if we want you to join sentences in an exam, using subordinating conjunctions will give you varieties of those subordinating conjunctions that you're supposed to use so that you can make your work easier. So you're not supposed to worry about all those conjunctions. And then you start saying all these subordinating conjunctions are quite many. How am I supposed to know which to use and which not to use? We'll give you in an exam. And by so doing, you'll know which one to use. You can have another example. Mr. Omondi, Mr. Omondi called the students. Mr. Omondi called the students back to class. Mr. Omondi called the student back to class because they were apologetic. Mr. Omondi called the student back to class because they were apologetic. In such a case, you will find that this, uh, the, these students, maybe they had wronged the teacher, and the teacher decided to call them back to class once they apologized. And I said, no. If, I, if we had a, uh, a question and I tell you, in this sentence, identify the main clause and identify the subordinate clause. I have said, in such a case, your work is very easy because in, uh, I said, from where we have the subordinate clause or from where we have the subordinate conjunction to the end, that is, is our it, our dependent clause. And in this case, the, clause, the subordinate conjunction that we've used is because. So from where we have because, up to where we have the full stop, that will be our dependent clause. That will be our dependent clause. And now from where we have Mr. Omondi called the student back to class. Now that will be our main clause. That will be the main clause. That will be the main clause. And you can see, we said a main clause conveys a complete thought or conveys a complete idea. When I say Mr. Omondi called the student back to class, even without going any further, that sentence is communicating. But now when I say, because they were apologetic, that information is hanging. That information is quite, you will ask yourself, what is happening? Or who are these people who are apologetic? So you will see that the information is quite hanging. And that is why we said this clause will always depend on the main clause to convey its meaning. I understand that I've been told that there is a question. So we can continue. So I understand that we are having a question. There's someone who is asking, what is a clause? Someone by the name Makajuma is asking, what is a clause? 
A clause is a part of a sentence or a sentence that has a predicate, that, that has a subject. It has a subject and a predicate. It's a part of a sentence or a sentence that has a subject and a predicate. And the predicate is the verb. A predicate is a verb. So you're not supposed to be hanging. When you are talk, we are talking about clothes, we are talking about a certain part of a sentence that has a subject and a clause. For instance, so that I can ex explain what's a clause. She had no homework. She had no homework. She had no homework. Nor did she have any chores. She had no homework. Nor did she have any chores. We have two sentences in this, and these two, uh, and this, we have two clauses which are making one sentence. The first clause is, she had no homework. And the second clause is, she, ha she, she had no homework, nor did she have, a, this one is also another clause. We can take this one and separate it from the rest. She had no homework. She had no homework. In such a case, this is a clause. This is a clause. And I said that a clause has a subject. And in this case, we have our subject. The she is the subject. She had no homework. We have a, a, a predicate, which is the verb. And you can see uh, well, the reason why I said a clause can be a part, it can be a, sent, a part of a sentence or a sentence on its own. You can see that in this sentence it follows the rules of grammar, where we have the SVO. The homework there will be our object. So this sentence is grammatical because we have the subject, verb, object, and all sentences in English, whether they are simple sentences whether they are compound or complex sentences, they should follow the SVO to be grammatical. So in, in such a case, if the sentence was S or V, the sentence would be, as much as it's an English sentence, it would not be grammatical. So you can see that conjunctions are quite easy. They are not that hard. And it's just a matter of practice. If you continue doing practice, you'll find that conjunctions, you'll never fail a question under conjunctions. But there is a certain type of conjunction that is not covered in, uh, in uh, our level, that is the high school. And the correlative conjunctions, maybe just to mention, the reason why they are called correlative conjunctions, they appear in pairs, or we call them relatives. And those ones are quite easy. Even when you go to the grade seven, the, the class seven, the class eight, they understand them quite easy because once you see the first part of the conjunction, you are able to know the other part of the conjunction, the correlative conjunctions. And I said these conjunctions are covered in form three. The correlative conjunctions I said are covered in form three. For instance, we have either. For instance, the first, the first thing this, a student sees either, and we are talking about conjunction. They already know the other pair is or. Either or, when they, they see neither, they already know the other one is nor. When they see not only, they know the other one that is supposed to follow is also, uh, not only, but also. Not only, but also. You can also have scarcely when. When they see the word scarcely or hardly, they know whatever is following is when. So these ones are just, uh, 
the examples of correlative conjunctions, they are quite many. Correlatives. And I said these ones are covered in form three. The subordinating conjunctions, I said, are covered in form two. And the coordinating conjunctions are covered in form one. So that is it for today. We've covered the conjunctions. They are parts of speech, or what we call nowadays, we, don't, we no longer call them parts of speech, but we call them word classes. So they are part of the word classes in grammar, and they form the basic. All the word classes form basic in, uh, they are the base in grammar. If you understand them, just know that you understand grammar, and you'll never fail any question concerning grammar. That is it for today. Thanks for listening and for watching us. And do not change the channel. We are having another lesson. Keep tuned. And you can just have or take a short break and be settled for our next lesson. Thank you. Any if you have any question, you can contact me via 0708-179-468. You can contact me via 0708-179-468. Four six eight. Thank you. Kenyatta University will hold its 52nd graduation ceremony on Friday, 16th December 2022 at the main campus along the Thika Superhighway. KUTV will provide live coverage of the graduation ceremony from 8am. The graduation ceremony will also be streamed live on KUTV.